Hi, and welcome back to our channel Summaries of a Bookworm. Your number one place for all who need or like to listen to book summaries. Let's start with the book summary of today. Matthew Desmond's book Evicted is a harsh and honest look at poverty in the United States. It is based on real-life events that Desmond either saw or heard about while doing research for the book. Even though Desmond was there for most of the events in the book, he doesn't talk about himself. Instead, he tells the story in the third person, letting the characters do most of the talking. Still, it's helpful to have a timeline. The events of Evicted take place between 2008 and 2009. Desmond began his field research in 2008 when he was a PhD student in sociology at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Then, he moved into the college mobile home park, a trailer park owned by Rough Around the Edges' Tobin Charney, who was in his 70s at the time. Charney is one of the landlords in this book. There, he met Scott, a kind but sad man who had lost his nursing license because he was addicted to painkillers. He also met Lorraine, a white woman who was 54 and had fibromyalgia, and Pam and Ned, two crack addicts with four kids between them, three from previous relationships and one on the way. When they were kicked out, Pam was pregnant. This book tells eight different stories, and one of them is about her family. At the beginning of Evicted, Desmond tells us about Arlene Bell. She is a poor black woman with two boys, Yori, 13, and Jafaris, 5. When we first meet her, she is kicked out of her home, and she and her sons have to go to a homeless shelter called, The Lodge. It's winter, and it's hard for her to find a place to live in the black north side of Milwaukee. She rents a run-down four-bedroom house there, but just a few weeks later, the city says the house is, unfit, for people to live in. She finally gets an apartment in a building owned by Sharena Tarver on 13th Street. Even though Desmond doesn't use the word, slumlord, the duplex is in terrible shape when Arlene moves in. There's a hole in the wall about the size of a fist, the carpets are dirty, and the front door has to be locked with a piece of wood. Even though she doesn't know it yet, she won't be here for long. Sharena is a tough, business-minded, but not a heartless woman who owns a bunch of mostly run-down north side properties. Sharena used to teach school, but after a failed attempt to run a daycare, she went into real estate. She saw that there was a lot of money to be made in the rental market, so she decided to focus on renting to poor black people, but not just because she felt sorry for them. In fact, as Desmond points out, landlords in the inner city make some of the most money. This is because they can charge the same rents as landlords in more affluent areas, but they don't have to spend as much on repairs because their tenants are so poor and desperate that they'll take anything. It doesn't help that most landlords in Nice neighborhoods won't rent to people with criminal records or who have been kicked out before. This keeps out a lot of poor black people. Sharena knows this, so she starts her own small business, and her husband, Quentin, quits his job as a police officer to become her property manager. Desmond also tells readers about some of Sharena's other tenants. Lamar, a Vietnam War veteran and father who likes to play cards with the neighborhood kids. Doreen Hingston, a mother of four who has to live with her children Patrice, Natasha, CJ, and Ruby, as well as her grandchildren Mikey, Jada, and Kayla, and Crystal, who briefly sublet to Arlene before being kicked out. Lamar's disability makes it almost impossible for him to work, so he mostly lives off of his welfare check, which doesn't even cover the rent. Sharena lets him do odd jobs like painting recently empty apartments or cleaning the basement when he doesn't have enough money, but she doesn't always pay him well if she pays him at all. Like all the other tenants in the book, he has been kicked out. The house across the street from Lamar's is where Doreen lives with her children and grandchildren. People call Doreen a mother hen, and her kids are naturally funny and like to pull pranks. But when they don't have enough money, they feel sad and lethargic. Doreen doesn't leave the house very often, so she doesn't wear shoes very often. She shuffles around taking care of her family. Patrice and her kids move into the upstairs unit of the duplex for a short time, but they can't pay the rent for long on their own. In a few months, they move back in with Doreen. With the baby, Natasha has later, that makes eight people living in the bottom unit of the duplex. Natasha, the second oldest child, isn't ready to be a mother, so it's likely that the baby's grandmother, Doreen, will have to take on more responsibility. From this point of view, Natasha and Patrice are lucky because not everyone on South Side has a family to help them out. Most of them have to deal with their problems on their own, and women in particular are left to take care of their families on their own as more and more young black men are locked up because of the racist and unfair war on drugs. Doreen, Lamar, and Arlene are all kicked out of the house in the end. Crystal Mayberry moves into Arlene's old apartment, but she lets Arlene stay there as long as she helps pay the rent. Crystal is 18 years old, a Christian, and has been diagnosed with a number of mental disorders. 
Her mental health is unstable. When the rent is paid and there's food on the table, Crystal and Arlene get along. When there isn't enough, fights happen, and some of them get close to being physical. In order to pay the rent, Crystal does sex work. Even Arlene's son sees Crystal and her boyfriend having sex. When things finally reach a breaking point, Sharena takes both Crystal and Arlene to eviction court. Crystal moves into the lodge after being kicked out. She meets Vanetta, a black woman who is about to go to court for stealing. Vanetta wants to stay out of jail so she can take care of her kids. She and Crystal agree to split the rent on an apartment, but when Crystal gets violent and throws a woman out a window, Vanetta tells her to find somewhere else to live. Later, Vanetta is given a 15-month prison sentence, and her kids are sent to live with her family. The fact that Scott wants to get clean may be the only real sign of hope in the book. He has to have a lot of self-control and courage, but he is finally able to finish rehab, keep up with his methadone treatments, and deal with his addiction. This makes it hard, but not impossible, for him to get his nursing license back. It doesn't make it any easier for Scott to find a place to live, though, and like Desmond's other clients, he has trouble keeping a roof over his head. He finally gets a place to live through a program run by Guesthouse. Things don't work out as well for Arlene, though. Her lights are turned off, and Jafaris is sent to live with Arlene's sister, who is also his aunt. Yori lives with the family of his father. Arlene hopes that one day they will be able to look back on these evictions and laugh about them. The only thing readers can do is hope this dream comes true. Thank you for listening to our book summary. I hope we sparked your interest in the book. Please let us know in the comments below and give this video a thumbs up. Do you want to listen to more book summaries? Subscribe to us and you will get a notification every time we publish a new summary. Bye bye and see you next time.